All right. Hi everyone. I know as hell. I'm back from the grave. Finals are over. Fall semester's over. So I'm just kind of vegging out and no. I'm 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 probably editing this video to the death of me, which is why we look like this. I'm currently filming in my bathroom right now in my apartment because it's the only place that's quiet right now. <laughs> So I'm too young. I'm a clarinet performance major at Basement School of Music. I'm currently a junior. I recently asked everyone on my clarinet account if they had any like burning questions about music school or like just like careers in music. And I received a lot of amazing and like great questions. This video was supposed to be made freshman year, but I was, this is not, this is like a legitimate excuse, I swear. I was too busy with school. I was just like schooling away and I just did not have any time, but to compensate for that, I upgraded it, you know, as I always do. Um, I invited two of my amazing and really inspiring friends and, and colleagues, Zach and Juliana, to answer and discuss the questions that I received. I'm, re I'm currently reading through my iPad right now because, um, if you know me, I can't speak without writing down anything, so... Sorry. This is a disclaimer, this is a really extremely brutally honest video about our own experiences throughout our years of college as performance majors playing our instruments and our careers in general i look so stupid holding this <laughs> everyone's experiences are different mine juliana zach's all of our experiences are different we're just all different people and we just have different experiences it's our hope that with like all these different experiences that we share with you you take in what resonates with you and just whatever it doesn't just like let it go you know <laughs> all my videos here and my client account as well as um to help and educate those of you who are new to music or those of you who are like planning on actually you know pursuing a performance major or just a degree in music i know when i was a high schooler i wish that you know i had someone that i could just ask all my questions to and they'd answer like like honestly answer questions about like the process what school looks like and you know how do I audition and like the different careers that are out there and this is what we're here to do today so don't fret so um happy watching uh thank you Kamsamida. dude my Korean 101 skills are thriving hey guys can you like test the mic I love my Korean <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing I can say with that much passion <laughs> orchestra in Indiana to play second clarinet. Before this, I was a master's student at Eastman. I graduated this past May. Um, and then before that, I was an undergrad clarinet performance major at Vanderbilt University. Uh, my name is Zach. This is, this is worse, right? It's Cheez-Its? How did she, I didn't, these are just napkins. These are dry napkins. studied in Toronto, where I'm also from, for my undergrad. Couldn't have said that in a weirder way. <laughs> so I'm from Toronto, and I went to school at the University of Toronto, also got a clarinet performance degree there, and now I'm in Rochester finishing up, and I should be graduating uh, this spring. So yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Can we swear? Um. You can bleep it out, you can bleep me. I can bleep it. Yeah. All right, so the first question that the people want to know, do classes feel like useless or inapplicable sometimes? Yeah, they do. The thing is, sometimes you're doing stuff that feels super not applicable, but later on you find out it comes in into use. Like mm -hmm. a lot of like oral skills or like some schools call them like musical skills, which is just kind of like dictation and like having to do like singing tests and stuff. You find out like in your music making that that stuff actually does help. 
developing your musical sense. And also you can like, you can try to find little nuggets of wisdom from any teacher because these people all have experience in the classical music industry. They've all like been to such different corners of it. I still find myself thinking of maybe like one thing that a teacher said from like my first year of undergrad. And it might not even be about like the subject, the subject they were teaching, just about like life. You know, like one of my professors once said, music is just vibrations in the air. When it's done, it's done. And like no one died. Yeah. Hopefully. Just be open to what, what you can actually apply to your life. Yeah. Yeah. These professors, they know what they're doing a lot of the time. Not always. I'm not saying all professors know. <laughs> just like the way that they're approaching it can be valuable. This is a lot because like I'm an undergrad. So like whenever I talk to like any of you guys, like you're just like, I It totally feels that way, but like then once you get to grad school, like they seem to trust you a little bit more. <laughs> once you get into grad school, they assume that you've like learned enough that you can actually focus on what you want to do. I mean, ninety percent of my time in school is playing. Like I spend very few hours at the school not playing my instrument. I'm gonna change it to 1080 because 4K is gonna drain everything. 4K is also scary. It really it looks is. too real. Like, I don't like my it. pores. We're not meant to see that, you right? know? Like <laughs> we have like our brains have to adjust. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I think this is also like a question for me because I'm selfish. They ask like how much theory will they have to learn and like they just want to play, you know? Yeah. It's important though. Mm -hmm. Like as much as like it might feel like it's not important, like there's a lot of stuff like they're gonna teach you about like chords that have countries, German chords, French chords, Neapolitan six. <laughs> Like the thing is, it's important and there is stuff in there that you will need to yeah. use and will help with stuff like, with like phrasing and like knowing when to put the proper place to like, you know, put emphasis and like take time. I've never taken an audition or played for some of them and like, but did you know that this is a German sixth chord? Like, <laughs> what if you, were, if you were in the audition and like, <laughs> you know how they like, they say like, you know, they ask you to do something different. Like if they're, if you play and they're like, okay, but next time could you bring out the Italian augmented system. Like, that's never gonna happen. They're gonna say faster, slower, lighter, heavier. Like, that's like that's what they're gonna say in an audition. So like, technically, a lot of it isn't gonna be directly applicable, but like, everything that surrounds it is useful. And you're gonna have to learn it. Like, you have to take, right. I don't know about here, but like, in Toronto, like, we had four mandatory semesters it's a lot of here, theory. So it was like, we had to take theory just through our, pretty much through our first and second years. And then for our, like, Junior and senior years, we yeah. didn't have to take any theory if we didn't want to. Here you have to take two four, two four, two four. What does this mean? Two four, two, four. six eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> Michael Wayne. <laughs> Five semesters of theory, <laughs> and then I think seeing and then starting spring semester of junior year, I think we have to take something related to theory and senior year as well. Oh, so you got to take stuff. Okay, I guess this yeah. is the Canadian school. System. So anybody applying to Canadian schools, don't worry. <laughs> so what should we expect when you're auditioning for whether it be like orchestras or like for schools? Mm -hmm. Don't have this picture in your head of what it's gonna be like and when you get there if it's not like that then you're totally thrown off. Yeah. Like just cover all the bases you know how to cover, like playing in time, in tune, have your phrasing ideas clear, and then you show up and you offer that, and then whatever happens happens. Oh my God, That's my <laughs> looking at me. If you have an expectation, it's never gonna turn out that way. It's control what you can control, but also be okay with letting go of the things right. you can't control. And putting it into proper perspective, if you don't win this audition or get into this school, like, you're not gonna die. Yeah. yeah it's honestly. just music. And it's not something that's, like, quantifiable in terms of, like, grades or, like, like, everybody likes different things in music. Don't take it personally if mm -hmm. 
you don't advance in an audition, whether it's like professional or like even in school, you just might not be a good fit for them. And if you had got it, you might not be happy there. You just take any job, like just because it's an orchestra job or just because it's like a music job, that doesn't mean you're going to like it. There's other things around it, like other factors that influence the, the nature of that job that like, if you're not, if, if they don't like accept you, like it, it might have enough, like another place will, you know, that like you might fit in better to, you yeah. know? Just like being open to that. Like the know? fact that all three of us are here at Eastman meant that like the people in charge, people upstairs, they saw <laughs> us as being a good fit for this school. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like we're here now, we fit in pretty well, I'd say. But also, like yeah. we're all of unique players. Yeah, like, we don't all... play the same way. Like right. you know, we didn't all show up with the exact same style of playing stuff. Just we fit into this environment. Just the way the school you know? operates. Yeah, like that was like we were seen as good fits for that. But that doesn't mean that like somebody who maybe like applied and didn't get in is any less of a musician, yeah. any less of a player. They it's might just, not like, be as happy here. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's about. Like they always say at like schools, they're like, we're also auditioning. For like yeah. you also have to take into yeah. account like if this is the environment you want to be in and not necessarily always think if I get into the school like I'll be successful that's not always the case you know so yeah, just like be open say yes to what is you know Word. and you can't like tie your self-worth to those results yeah oh, at totally. all I did my first audition like two weeks ago Juliana was there also and so like we kind of had this like it was a healthy experience yeah. because like I had someone with like that mindset telling me that like tell you're telling each other that the whole time really and so we walked away with it like pretty much unscathed like we didn't win the audition but we were okay with that yeah. and because we like, learned from it yeah learn from it exactly like, still had a fun day oh yeah especially just you're gonna learn so much regardless of how the audition goes mm -hmm. in just like be open to like all you're gonna learn with every audition you take you're gonna be gaining more experience and more like tools put in your tool belt for next time be open to the learning experience even if like you don't get the results you want like there's stuff to take away absolutely you guys are so smart. What the heck? <laughs> I'm emotionally attached to Van Doren for. Uh, Van Doren <laughs> for. Are we all on four strength reads right now? No. Oh. Are you? No. Yeah, we're on M13 <laughs> lives. M13 lives, let's go. Well, they'll know what we'll play on now. So I'll be They don't know that. mine because I don't play for Oh, right. What do you play? They don't get to know. Is that on the questions? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. How. What are your experiences with audition anxiety and like what are some tips you can give to our viewers? It's really just a process. Okay. Whatever point you're at right now until the day, the last note you play before you die, it's a process. When you get to undergrad or grad school, you're gonna be nervous, like you're around all new people. Everybody and that's gonna nervous. like- Yeah, everyone's feeling the same way too. That's gonna maybe feel like you're taking steps back, but that's the experience you need to get better at it. So I really think just doing it and not like, not stigmatizing the, the anxiety and the nerves so much, but really letting yourself feel it mm -hmm. and doing it anyways. And then you, co you come out of it and you're like, I did it. It was just vibrations in the air. I don't know, that's helped me. Like after a performance, maybe I wasn't super happy with, I'm like, I'm still alive, I'm still breathing. Nothing happened. My happens. family and friends still love me. Yeah, me, no, every performance. Yeah. No one, no one was harmed, you know? Like, and that, then more often, <laughs> more often than not, other people were like, I enjoyed that performance so much. Like I couldn't even tell you were nervous. Doing it over and over again and feeling like, putting yourself in those situations where you feel that. like. Yes. Taking up performance opportunities because that's like you need to do that like mm -hmm. the first time you perform It's just like everybody's a nervous. It's so vulnerable to perform for somebody like it it's is. it's such a personal thing And it's so like they're all watching you. They're all everybody's eyes are on you whether it's even like in a big ensemble Like it's it's very vulnerable to play your instrument like it is something that you're passionate about It's about like you're it, you're like breathing you're physically breathing through it And this is what's important to me. This is like a part of me that like you don't see all the time, you know? It's super anxiety inducing. So doing that over and over again, like it does get you, it's not that like you stop feeling anxious, you just start becoming more comfortable with the feeling of yeah. the anxiety. And I if you feel that way, that's a good thing because it means that you care. Yeah. It's you care about it. it once you stop feeling nervous, that's when you should some be worried. People, like, some people wish they could feel something so strongly about anything. Yeah. To care so much about something that it like affects your entire body. Like you're sweating, you're shaking, like your heart is racing. And it's because it excites you and it's like, it's real. It's, it's so... And so just being able to like accept that and see it as something that is not a bad thing. It is good it's that you... It's a tool. It's a tool. You can yeah. use it in a positive way. If you care, that's something that schools will think is important. And it's not about perfection for like school auditions. 
you're going to school. Like you're, you're going to a place so you can get better. They're not looking for a perfect player already or else they have nothing to teach you. Yeah, like, it's a safe space. Yeah. At least it should be a safe space for you to like take risks, make mistakes, learn from it. Yeah. Like, like they want to see somebody that they can help shape and help grow and give them the tools to grow and become mm -hmm. a professional musician in whatever sense that is. And then I think on the other hand though, there are some more practical things you can work on. Yeah. Like the physical effects that happen to you when you walk onto a stage. Because mm -hmm. I think I've come to a much better place mentally, mm -hmm. but sometimes I still walk on the stage and like my body just remembers mm -hmm. that feeling and like, like things shake. will happen, like Some a leg shake or yeah. like fingers mm -hmm. trembling. Yeah. For me, like my breath capacity gets so much smaller. Mm -hmm. So thinking, there's your problem, what solutions could you have to that? And then Side also bit. there are like experts on the subject that could like give you more expertise and like tools from the what I yeah. 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 <laughs> like more general stuff that's not yeah. that specific to like, like visualization your techniques oh yeah visualization um, techniques yeah. affirmations like meditation oh, yeah. sorry this is a question every time I post a Q&A this is the number one question that okay. I get like multiple times Shoot. how many hours do you guys practice and how do you fit it into your schedule Whatever you say, somebody's gonna be compl comparing it to them. Like that's a th with that, it's it's literally like people use it as like a validation yeah. thing. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I did it too. Yeah, like too. that's the thing. It's like I still do it. Yeah, no, to an extent, yeah, I still do it. Like honestly, like that kind of like of conversation, like that's not productive because right. everybody's lives are different. Everybody's commitments are different. Everybody's like literal physical capabilities mm -hmm. are different. You do what you have to do to get done what you need to get done, mm -hmm. you know? The amount of hours that you, and it's not like I'm gatekeeping by like right. not saying it or whatever, exactly. but like, I don't, <laughs> 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 it's more harmful for me to like tell people how much I practice because then that's now uh, like a bookmark of like something to, mm -hmm. oh, this person is doing this thing that I like. Just because like, like even if you want to go to school here, like if you want to go to school at Eastman, just because I practice the amount that I practice doesn't mean that you can't get in practicing a different amount, whether it's less or more. It's about making your practice time the most efficient it can be. Because some days you really only have half an hour, you might have an hour, you know, like, and it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Like honestly, in my undergrad, I went crazy with that stuff, comparing myself to other people. And it's tough being in a music school, especially with practice rooms where there's like, hundreds of students around yeah. practicing constantly to like hear them, compare yourself, see who's staying for longer. But like string players don't have the same kind of fatigue physically as wind players do, you know? Like wind players can't play for four hours in a row, you know? Especially if you had a day at school where you have like a lesson, a chamber rehearsal, you're an playing, orchestra yeah. rehearsal, you're a band rehearsal. Yeah, your day is tired. full, and your day is full of playing your instrument still. Yeah, like, it's you're still, still productive. It's still productive, mm -hmm. but like it's it's not about the amount of hours. Like that is the last thing that's about. It's about creating a practice routine that is efficient that you enjoy because mm -hmm. that's the thing. Is like everybody wants to be be a performer, but like ninety percent of being a performer is practicing on your own. So like you need to create a practice routine that is healthy and also that you enjoy so that like it's something that you want to do. That's what it's about. What makes you like hit all the spots of your playing that you need to work on. Mm -hmm. The amount of hours is relevant because it's different for everybody. It's gonna change yeah. every day. Sometimes you can't fit it in like you can't and that's fine. You shouldn't feel guilty about it. It doesn't make you any less of a musician. Like you have other commitments. We're still people. I know when I was in high school, I was just always like, even now, like when I was a freshman, it was a lot. High school like, I did not practice. Like my goal freshman year was to practice six hours a day. That is insane. That is and I, oh I did God. it, but did now it, it has left such a huge scar on me. I'm yeah. so burnt out now. I can't do oh, over two hours, honestly. Yeah. I just yeah. can't. Yeah. I want to sound like I want to sound like a professional already as mm -hmm. a junior in mm -hmm. undergrad. That totally messes up my process and like being patient because like you need patience. Mm -hmm. like practicing is a process. Right. Like, becoming it's, a musician it's is a process. process. At the end of your practice session, you're not gonna be ready to like play a concerto with the New York film. That's right. just like not how it is, you know? Like accept the process. Yeah, like my Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> like, <laughs> right now, my daily life, so I work at a coffee shop and my schedule is nine to four. And then I get home and I'm so tired because I was standing on my feet all day. I aim for two hours of practice and it doesn't always happen and I'm okay with it. But for this period in my life, that's been enough. 
like I even the the orchestra I play with, I took and won that audition with that kind of practice schedule. So like it's possible. In school, I would usually aim for three hours, and sometimes it's closer to two. But when I was in school, that was enough. Yeah. Like, nice. And I think I probably have on the lower end of the spectrum of what people say that you should do. But like it worked for me, and I think it's just proof that like it's a different number for everyone. Yeah, and it right. also can change based on the time of your life that you're in. Exactly. Yeah. Do you guys have any tips on like avoiding injury and like how do you deal with that? And like how do you deal with like the mental and like physical health part of like sleep? And, and like, it's not cute. It's not no, cute when you say you don't about, sleep. Like, oh, I practiced for six hours. I didn't sleep. Oh, I slept four hours. Honestly, like it took me my. It took me until after I finished my entire undergrad to realize how important taking breaks is. Like it is so much more important. And there's so many more times where like taking a day off is so much more useful than just like pushing yourself through like a really like bad practice yeah. section. Like sometimes the best thing that you need is a day off and doing it before you need it. That's the biggest thing is yeah. taking breaks before you need them. I mean, because a forced break is not a real break. Right. Like being forced to take a break because you you're already yourself, injured. Yeah. Or because of something or because like, you know, like you're sick. You're not feeling like because right. you, you'll make yourself sick if you don't sleep and you don't like yeah. like drink a lot of water, like get a good water bottle and have it with you the whole time you're practicing and stuff. Because you spend a lot of hours in a practice room, like hydrate yourself. I didn't drink any water. Like my whole undergrad, oh my god. I like, barely drank any water. And then like just if you get a good water bottle, like that like keeps your water cold if you like cold water or even like room temperature just like something that will maintain the temperature of your water is like so i mean that's just specific to me i'm like super neurotic <laughs> oh why anytime if you're wondering like if you're feeling burnt out but take a break before you're burnt out hydro flask is that a hydro flask hell yeah you can sponsor us hydro I keep flask. Sponsor me. <laughs> taking breaks is from. productive mm -hmm. it's like it is more productive than practicing sometimes take a break like I'm sure there are people right now that might be watching. I don't know how yeah, many people watch. Yeah, if you're practicing, like, if you're practicing, practicing watching, stop. Time. Stop practicing. Stop. Take a five minutes. Doesn't take five breather. minutes. <laughs> take like ten minutes to watch. Specifically, like that's what like got me to have a healthy relationship with practicing is having a healthy relationship with breaks. Like what like I try to do at least, which like sometimes doesn't happen. Like don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect, but like a thing that I try to do is like I have at least one day a week where I don't play clarinet, and that doesn't mean not like practicing, listening to music is practice, like listening to the music you're studying, listening to recordings of what you're working on, like that is a form of practicing yeah. that is useful and it's also giving yourself like physical rest, like gives you a chance to like actually process the music you're learning, you know? But also when I say break, I'm not saying that you have to do that either. Like sometimes right. just like keeping your head out of it and then coming with like a fresh brain, you know, like when you get at something, you haven't touched it in a couple days, if everything that you're struggling with seems so much easier. So like, honestly, like take breaks. Um, so, what do you guys think is the, what's the best path or like direction to like professional playing? Like, should you take like internships, junior, mm -hmm. senior year, or should you like just you know take auditions after graduation? I mean, I think it depends on your specific interests and like what you want for your career. For me, it's orchestra. So like, say I think after my sophomore year, I started looking into summer festivals, which is kind of like an obvious way. But in like I don't think that like summer festivals are necessarily like the gateway to success, but I think doing it at least once just kind of expands your view and your perspective. You meet people from other schools, other parts of the country, maybe other countries, and it can really just like give you some perspective that you need for like the long haul for your career. It, it makes the music world a little bit smaller. Yeah. Which is good, but like, yeah, I guess outside of, I guess I'm also like, my interest is orchestral playing also, so like, I don't really have anything different. I, I didn't even know that with these internships, are they like with what, with like ensembles and stuff? Is that a real thing? That's something I'm interested in too. Yeah. So like, which is why Eastman has an ALP program, or it's leadership program, yeah. which is yeah, really great awesome. resource. So like, if you are like considered Eastman and like you're interested in like, admin stuff. Even if you're not, like, like there's such great resources. Right, yeah, like it's, are, like, not you might be interested in it after you take a class. Yeah. Exactly, like, I think I was always interested in, like, arts admin, even, like, back in elementary school. So I think it, like, what these two other people said, it really depends on, like, what you want to do. I think this is really important to, like, process is that just because you're not auditioning for stuff and you have other interests doesn't mean you failed. I feel like that's something that I've been struggling with and like when I'm talking with my peers, that's something that they're also struggling with when we have like 
multiple different passions in music that we want to do. Being true to yourself and your various interests, first of all, makes you a happier person mm -hmm. and then ultimately I think makes you a more authentic musician. Mm -hmm. Get out of your comfort zone. Just like, yeah. And that's what people connect with, is people being genuine. Like, that's like the stuff that does well a lot of the time. Like, for the most part, like, people like that, those are the artists that, like, people connect to a lot of the time, the people that are being, like, mm -hmm. the most genuine mm -hmm. and, like, the most true to themselves. So, like, yeah, don't do other stuff. This isn't everything. Yeah. You know? It's not everything. Music like, school is not the only <laughs> school of music. It is. Right. Oh my god. No way. Okay. Hate that I said it's that way, but, like, no, like no. the whole world is our school. Yeah. So what does grad school look like at Eastman, like this school? So Overall, would recommend. <laughs> it was exactly what I needed for my the point of my education that I was at when I got here. Something people don't talk about enough is how hard socially the adjustment to grad school is, and especially in Rochester, it can be a little hard at first because people feel kind of isolated. You know, the weather can be kind of depressing. And I think it took me like at least a full semester before I really felt like I made like genuine friends. And that was tough because then like that affects your mental health and then that affects like your performance and everything. But it's worth it. It just takes a little extra time because mm -hmm. it's different than undergrad because they're not like forcing you to do all of these activities together. Right. And you're not always in like classes with the same people. That's, every day. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Is like you're gen generally like in school for fewer hours. Like you're mm -hmm. in the building for fewer hours than you would be in undergrad. And you're also, yeah, like in technically like you have fewer like, like hours yeah. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And like that's where you meet a lot of your friends in undergrad is like when you're forced into all of the same theory classes. But the but experience, totally worth it. yeah, the experience at Eastman has been like, has been amazing. Like I've gotten so much out of this, especially like our, my private teacher, or our private teacher. That's like the highlight of being here totally. is like, and as a grad That's student, why we're here. yeah, and like as a grad student, like your relationship with your teacher is a lot more like a mentorship mm -hmm. than it might have been in your undergrad. Like it's more about like guiding you into a professional, into the professional world. A lot of the things you do in school are kind of relating, hopefully relating to like what you want to be doing. And you're playing a lot, like that's the thing is like, as a grad student, like you, you play with everybody. Like I'm still like, like I'm friends with tons of like undergrads, obviously. Like... That sounded so mean. What? Well I meant like to them, like obviously like I wouldn't be doing this like if we weren't friends. But like... Um, you friends? Aww. There's tons of playing to be done. Like that's the thing is a lot of your time in school is spent playing music, which is like best part about it if you're doing a performance degree. Oh, well, um, can you guys talk about like the classes you're taking? So you have to take bibliography, you have to take three history classes, you have to take one theory class, and that's it. Mm -hmm. However, they do make you take um, some entrance exams yes. to like place you. If like they test your history knowledge and they test your theory knowledge, if you fail like the history, the theory one, you have to like take a remedial mm -hmm. theory class or whatever. If you fail theory one and then the history one, like depending on how you do on the test, like if there's a specific era of history that like you did poorly on, they might make you take like a specific history yeah. class. But still, uh, there is a remedial history class if you do that badly, but sorry, not bad. Uh, if, you do, like, if you don't get a, a high, in, like as high of a grade as their cutoff is yeah, to yeah, not yeah. take it, then they'll make you take a remedial history. Or if you just do bad on one section, they'll be like, yeah. okay, one of your mandatory history classes has to be this era. I didn't get low music. enough to take the remedial course, but I was the weakest in like Baroque history because pretty much any grad school you go to, I think they do those like entrance exams. Yeah, you have to do them pretty much. But the course load is not that heavy because no. I'd say like each semester of the four semesters, I was, I think I just had like one like heavy academic class each time. You also have to take some electives, like an elective I'm taking right now, which I'm really enjoying, is um, the history of film music. I also took one that was a part of the ALP program she was talking about earlier. Even though that's like not my area of expertise, it exposed me to so much. Like that was super cool because then when like summer 2020 rolled around, I feel like I had a little bit of knowledge about like the issues that were really coming to light. It was toasty. It was toasty in this room. Put like little fire. It's really toasty in this room. So we're all dying. How did you keep track of like, well, for like professional auditions and like grad school auditions, like how did you keep track of like the dates of the audition, when it is, like the rounds and stuff? I made, personally for me, like I made just like a document and I put everything down. 
For me, I think it helped to actually physically write it. Yeah, yeah. Too, like physically yeah. writing it down. But just like having down like the school and then just like dates, uh, audition requirements, and then just like putting that in and having that as something like, either physical if you like need to write it down or even if just like type it out and just like having something that you can always refer back to. Yeah, it's available on the websites and stuff. Eliminating the steps makes it a lot easier yes. to keep track. And set yourself up for success. Set yourself up for success, and I didn't do this, but in retrospect, it might have helped. You could make like a little booklet for each school, either like on your iPad or like actually print out the papers. You know, have like this is like my Michigan book, yeah. and have the list of the requirements, and then actually have the music in there the for yeah. you. I think what's so helpful about like writing down everything is, as a clarinetist and you're auditioning, Mozart clarinet concerto is gonna basically be on. Every yeah, audition. a lot of overlap. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of overlap, and like if you can see that, then you'll know like oh, I have to prepare this for this this yeah. this schools. Mm -hmm. You know. You don't really get stressed out. It's overwhelming though, like it definitely is. So right. putting it all in one place definitely like yeah. can calm and that also, anxiety. also, don't be afraid to like cut a certain school off your list if it's going to make you learn totally different repertoire than the other mm. schools. Like I know it might be hard to let go of. It might give you a better shot at the other schools. Mm. I just don't think you should feel like you're like weak or lazy for yeah. doing that. Setting like, boundaries for no, yourself. No, you're just being efficient. Yeah, being efficient, setting boundaries. like. This is so reassuring because like, <laughs> like for me, in high school when I was like auditioning, I auditioned for like nine schools. That's crazy. Because I was just like, I'm not going to get into anything. Like all of them asked for different rep and like that's what kind of got me to like this rut and like I almost had like tendonitis and it was just like really bad. And this is so reassuring now because it's like I thought like if I don't apply to all these schools and like I can't it's determine my worth or like as no. a musician. The thing is you're also a lot, at least for me, I don't know about you, but like I was comparing myself seeing other people playing my instrument applying places and it was like mm -hmm. even though they not may not be applying to like some of the schools I'm applying to, I see that and I'm like, oh, I need to apply there. I need to apply there. And like you're comparing yourself to eight different people and yeah. you're trying to cover all the bases to make sure you have everything right. covered. But it's like, look at like, just like focus on you. Like your only competition should be like your previous mm -hmm. self. How did you guys, you know, decide that Eastman was good for you and like that it would be like the best choice for you? What were some other factors you guys considered into like choosing Eastman? This was like the cheapest option. Yeah, so sometimes it's purely about like money, where you live. Yeah, just like practical things like that, like logistics. Mm -hmm. The other place I was kind of choosing between was like a big university. The music school is only a tiny part of it. Mm -hmm. Eastman I thought would be a good contrast to that, mm -hmm. to like actually be in like a conservatory setting. Yeah. You, you went to Vanderbilt, you went to the University of Toronto. Yeah, which, they're both huge, like, so right. huge And you're gonna, schools. like, be in the dining hall with people who are, like, engineers right. or, like, pre-meds. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. I was so inspired by everyone. And, like, that added to my music education, I think. Like, and then coming here, really just being immersed in music all the time. Everyone in the studio wants a music career, whereas yeah. like some of my colleagues at Vanderbilt now, they might be in like law school or like one of my friends is at Georgetown now. And like that was inspiring in a way, but then for two years it was nice to be around people that were all going for a similar thing. For me, the big selling point, with, and a teacher is very important. That's the yeah. thing, it's like you do have to make sure that you like your teacher. That was like the main pull for me was, was a teacher. Teacher, but also like the Eastman community is like so strong and so supportive. Everybody comes to the concerts and like you come out. It's a great vibe. And having a bigger studio is like really nice to have that many people to lean on, to play for, to inspire you, and not in like a way that like makes people feel bad. Like, but like nobody's cutting each other down. Like nobody's. Right. There's no bad vibes at all. The performance opportunities are plentiful. Like there's. And the thing about Rochester is like Rochester isn't like the best city, but because of that, like you can really focus on your education here. Mm -hmm. It's also like not a super expensive city to live in. You can live in a studio apartment by yourself, like right downtown. You don't have to work full time. And you don't to work, yeah, it. you don't have to work full time to afford it. Like it's, it's really reasonable. And for me, like I'm from Toronto, so Rochester is like a two to three hour drive, which is like so so close. I'm an international student, but I live closer than like almost every single yeah, person that literally. I know here. COVID makes traveling the border impossible. I've had to walk across the border every time I wanted to go home. Juliana will drive me up to Niagara Falls and I have to walk 10 minutes across pedestrians to Canada Bridge. With all his bags. With all my bags. <laughs> Choosing Eastman, like, the community is great. I've learned so much from all the teachers and professors. The halls are really nice, mm -hmm. the performance spaces are really nice, and there's 
two recital halls. Which, yeah. And also it's connected to a community music school. So like the Eastman Community Music School, like I work there as a teacher. And like, so if you want to be a teacher, you right. know, like that's a job you can have as a student, like an intro to like the teaching world. And take into consideration like the assistantships that mm -hmm. a certain grad school has available. I did one where I taught students at the University of Rochester who were taking like elective lessons and that was really great. There's tons of work opportunities here like at the school. Like they have tons of office assistants and like the concert office, the registrar's office, mm -hmm. like in the library. Whenever someone asks me why should I go to Eastman, I always say like the community. And they're always like, stop lying. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like the community here is great. Like the amount of times I've gone to Eastman, even before you know, I even got here was like like a lot because they do all state here. Allstate, yeah. I went to like 50 college tours here and for auditions and I've had such a history with it. Even on audition day, like everything was so nice. It's like a full day. You get there, they give you like a nice glossy yeah. folder. Care about which, like, you. It feels good, you know, they're like they give you a nice thing. Like I still have my folder. Like Me they too. gave me like it's like a, there's like seminars for parents because like while well, you're freaking out about your audition and you're not taking in any of the information about the school <laughs> if you're with your parents like your parents can go around and like go and get all this information like my mom came with me to my audition and she got all this information about the IML options for working what the academic life is like and like she went around and like found out all of this stuff but like we're just saying like the things like the positive aspects that drew us to mm -hmm. it that maybe like totally. makes those things that aren't as great a little bit more bearable mm -hmm. They make it bearable for me. You make it Aww. bearable. You were one of my first friends here. <gasps> oh my god, that's so true. Yeah. What is your plan after grad school? Okay. So for me, the end of grad school approaching, it was hard because, but getting to that last semester or last year approximately is like, I have to like live my own life now. I have to be an adult. And that's something that's always terrified me. Definitely a lot of anxiety involved. And it's hard because you can't see the future. Like I didn't know in like February that I would be like playing in my first orchestra job right now. I actually did a whole like like audition cycle again of like trying to get into schools for like an artist diploma or something like that. And I had a couple possibilities, but when it came time to make the decision, it made the most sense for me to stay in Rochester in the, the world I'm comfortable in at the moment that I've created for myself in the past few years. Find a job unrelated to music that just pays my bills. Keep practicing, keep looking for opportunities out there. And I actually took a year off in between uh, my undergrad and grad school. And part of that is because stuff didn't work out maybe the way that I wanted it to and it just, I was kind of put in a position where it was like, okay, what is best for me right now? And at that time, I like completely reset, like I took a whole month off of playing uh, my instrument and then I got set up with a new teacher, I got a job, I just working at like Starbucks. I worked and I took lessons and prepared for grad school in that time. So like at that point, like, yeah, just like being able to work and take lessons and focus on clarinet, that's what I did then. For me, now going into leaving grad school because it was like, I had a goal, but now I personally don't want to do any more school, school. So like applying to fellowship programs, like there's a New World Symphony in, in Miami, the Civic Orchestra in Chicago, and there's like the Orchestra Now, which is like somewhere else in New York State. But it's like those are fellowship programs and those are like other options outside of school. Um, that are like continuing your education in a way, but that is directly applicable. Like you don't have to take classes, you don't have to, you don't have lessons really at all, I don't think. Um, and you just kind of get that experience of like with the other younger people who are like on the cusp of, you know, having an orchestral job. Um, so like that's something that I'm going to be applying for. However, also like I am not like married to that idea. Like if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't work out, that is okay. So like my plan, if I don't, if that stuff doesn't work out is to, because I'm also like, since I'm Canadian and I'm studying in the US, um, my visa is only good for the time that I'm studying. Yeah. So like, I can't stay in Rochester for another mm -hmm. year. You know, like that wasn't an option for me as much as unless that would be Unless we do nice. a green card marriage. Unless we do a green card marriage. <laughs> is that real? Is that just, so unless we do a green card marriage, um, I'm gonna have to leave. Um, it's something we've talked about. Yeah. We're not dating, by the way. We're no. Not, like, <laughs> But the thing is, my back home is like a big metropolitan city. So like, my plan is kind of to do what I did in that gap year, but the next step. So go back, get a job, like just paying my bills, just like freelancing, 
as well, where, wherever I can. You know, that's where I built my connections was in Toronto with my undergrad. So like, I have people and places I could go to for work and stuff. And then just like keeping my eye out for the auditions coming up, you know, like professional auditions. How did you decide that, you know, you're going to be a performance major? This person said that, um, <laughs> Zach, you're smiling. That's okay. I'm trying to be a good um, listener. I don't know if that's like a bad smile or like a good smile. <laughs> so like, you're like, this person also asked, like, like knowing that it's a hard field. Like music school is so demanding. And the reason why it's demanding a lot of the time is because there's a lot of work required outside of your course. Like you already have so many courses, but then like there's this expectation that you can always be practicing. Like yeah. you could always be using your time to practice. Like, fill up every minute of every Fill up every minute of every day. And that like my whole undergrad, that like plagued me. I was always felt like I wasn't being productive, like I was wasting my time. But that's so not what it's about. That was that's not the reason why we started it. Like that's not the reason why we like decided to pursue music. It has nothing to do with like it's demanding and yes, like we have to meet those demands, but it's not about filling every single minute and that can be hard, especially when people don't take it that seriously. Honestly, like it it sounds kinda dumb to like like, <laughs> yeah. just, like not that it like And I'm not saying that in a way where like to put us down as musicians, right. but I mean it as to the outside world, like if you don't know the joy that yeah. blowing into this tube makes me feel, yeah. that's gonna look like weird. And that's, right. I mean, that's like something I got a lot. It's just, it's like people are like, is it even hard? And, it, and that can be so frustrating and that can contribute to you feeling like you need to fail every day yeah. and making it harder for yourself. For to prove, your, prove to yourself that it is hard and prove to other people, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I don't sleep, oh I like I practice all this time, like mm -hmm. I can't hang out because I have to practice because I'm so busy because like that's the only way people are going to take me seriously is if I make this the hardest thing and it is hard already, you don't need to make it any harder than it is. The reason why that I do this is so much like beyond what anything any person can say, like the joy that like music brings me is like that like transports me to like another realm of existence where time and space doesn't like matter. There's there's this uh, master class I took where this musician said like, and it was there's room in this business for everybody that needs to be here. Mm -hmm. And like, as much as it feels hard and it's competitive and it's like really difficult to like get yourself in a positive headspace sometimes. Like, if you need to be here, and I'm a person that feels like needs to be here. Like I don't see myself doing anything else. And this is what like what makes being like alive fun you know like i think aside from all the voices outside of us questioning why we're doing it all of us and all of you listening are going to like have those voices in your own head too mm -hmm. saying like does this matter am i wasting my time like shouldn't i do something that like actually helps people that was my thing i almost quit i almost transferred and studied something else but then i heard someone play the Copeland Clarinet Concerto. Like, listening to them play it made me feel things I had never felt before. If I'm able to do that for other people, then like, it is important and it's worth it. As much as like I'm talking like all like, kind of hippy-dippy like about how much love and joy music brings me, there are times where it brings me pain and like, I hate it and it makes me not like me. But like, that's not all of it, you know? It's like, and just like surrounding yourself with people that feel the same way about music and that can like pull you out of it, you know, mm -hmm. that can like look at it from an objective standpoint and look at you and like reassure you. But every time you face those conflicts from other people or from yourself and you don't run from it, but you just like take it head on and like after that you have so much more confidence like doing the right the thing yeah. that you're supposed to do. Um last thoughts you guys have. Just like have fun. I don't know. Yeah. Have fun. Enjoy yourself at You're school. not gonna Oh my god. Special and unique time when like all your friends are around you, you're all doing the same thing, same struggles, and that really connects people. Don't like just drown yourself in schoolwork, like that's not what it's about. Like the connections you make are important, that's what makes this worth it. Or if you're like on the verge of a mental breakdown, and yeah, you need to get a night where you get eight hours of sleep because yeah, you're not hours. at home anymore, like, like you got to take care of yourself True. before you get to that point, yeah. Thank you guys! <laughs> Thank you! Smash no. that subscribe button. I only post like maybe every two years, but like... <laughs> Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Punch it. Kick it. Bop it. Twist it. Pull it.